Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the guaranteed residual value or not guaranteed residual value when it comes to leases. Specifically, we're going to be looking from the lessee's perspective. The lessee is the renter. Now, the first thing we have to understand is what is guaranteed residual value? Well, guaranteed residual value is when the lessee guarantees a specific value, residual value, at the end of the lease term. What does that mean? It means let's assume you leased an asset for five years. One, two, three, four, five. And you bring back the asset after five years. The lessor, the owner of the asset, is expecting a certain value, a residual value, for example, $10,000 for this asset. Simply put, if they want to sell it today, you gave it, you gave it back to them, does it have a 10000 residual value? Well, if the answer is yes, then good. You guaranteed that residual value. If the answer is it's only worth 6000 and you guaranteed that residual value, then you have to come up with the difference. From an accounting perspective, we have to find out what do we, how do we deal with this guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value for two purposes. For the purpose of computing the liability of the lease and the purpose of the test, 90% test, to determine whether the lease is a finance or an operating lease. Simply put, for the 90% test, why the 90% test? Remember, when we have a lease, we have to determine whether a lease is an operating lease or a finance lease. One, one of the tests is to do what? Is to compute the present value of the lease payment to find out if they, if they are equal or greater than 90% of the fair value of the test. So the question is, do we include this residual value in the computation of 90%? That's one thing we have to do. Then the second thing we have to determine is whether we compute this residual value when we compute the liability. So remember, when we have an asset, whether it's a finance asset or an operating asset, remember, we debit an asset, credit the liability at the commencement of the lease. From the lessee, do we include this residual value and liability? And this is what we have to learn in this session. So that's why we have to be aware whether the lease is guaranteed or not. Let's start with unguaranteed. Well, good. Start with the easy part. Unguaranteed residual value, guess what? You don't include in the lease liability. So for the lease liability purposes, you ignore or the 90% test, which is the classification test you also ignore. Simply put, if you are not guaranteeing the residual value, just it doesn't exist. You're not guaranteeing anything. You are not, in quote, responsible for anything to include that thing, that number, in your computation. So that's easy if it's unguaranteed for the lessee. If it's a guaranteed residual value, now we have to know the rules, if the that residual value is guaranteed. Now, if it's guaranteed, and the expected value and the expected residual value is greater than the guaranteed value. Remember, I said you're guaranteeing $10,000 value for that machinery. And you expect, you know, it's going to be at least $15,000. Just, you know this. If that's the expectation, then guess what? You follow as if it's an unguaranteed residual value. Simply put, you ignore it. You don't have to include it in anything. If the expected residual value expected to be less than the guaranteed residual value. So you're, you, you are expecting 10, but the guaranteed, I'm sorry, you are guaranteeing 10, but the expectation, it's going to be seven. Well, you're going to have a shortage. You're going to have a shortage of $3,000. Guess what? Under those circumstances, you would include this 3,000 in the lease liability. You don't include it at gross amount. You will discount the 3000 the shortage, and you would include the shortage in your lease liability. Don't worry. We're going to work an example illustrating this concept. But those are simply the rules when it comes to when it comes to guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value. Well, let's take a look at an example to illustrate the concept. Adam leases a machinery with a fair value of $10,000 from HP Manufacturing. It's an uncancelable term of 50 months. Rental payment is $200 per month, annuity due. It means we're going to go ahead and make the first payment immediately. Adam guarantees a residual value of $800 at the end of the lease. And Adam believe, believes the residual value to be greater than $800. What does that mean? It means we are under, those, under these circumstances here. What do we have to do? We don't, we don't include in the lease we don't include in the lease liability. Why? Because if we if we think it's going to be worth than $800, then what are we responsible for? We're not really responsible for anything because we are we are guaranteeing it. So it's there. 
it's there for us. Estimated economic life of the machinery is 60 months, and Adam incremental borrowing rate is 6%, which is from a monthly perspective, because we are dealing with a monthly payment, is 0.5% per month. And HP manufacturing implicit rate is unknown. So the question becomes, compute the present value for the 90% test and to determine the lease liability. Okay, now let's start with the 90% test, then we'll, deter we'll determine the lease liability, what should be included. Now, before we compute the 90% test and the lease liability, most likely you are watching because you are either an accounting student or a CPA candidate looking for some help about this topic. Great, you have arrived. Let's go a step further. Go to farhatlectures.com where you can find additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, true false, that's gonna help you tremendously in your accounting courses and CPA preparation. I don't replace your CPA review course. I'm only a supplemental material. If you have not connected with me on social media, connect with me on LinkedIn, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So for the 90% test, since the amount is guaranteed, since the amount is guaranteed, we are going to include the guaranteed value in the test. So simply put, we're gonna take $200, the payment, times the present value of the annuity. Well, we have an annuity due here, n equal to 50, i equal to 0.5%. So this is basically the factor. And for the purpose of this exercise, I'm not teaching you the time value of money. This is only just to show you the computation. If you want to learn more about time value of money, just go to Farhat Lectures to my time value, uh, to, to my time value lessons. So this is gonna give us the present value of the payment. And for the 90% test, we're gonna take the guaranteed residual value times 0.77924, which is n equal to five, n equal to 50, i equal to 0.5%. Again, here we are talking about a single amount, 623. Together, they're gonna give us 9,497. Now, if we take 9,497 divided by 10,000, that's gonna give us 97.93 percentage, which is above 90%. So for the purpose of 90%, we are going to always include the residual value of guaranteed one more time, if guaranteed, always include. Whether we are gonna be short of it or not short of it for the 90%, we include it. Now, well, how about the liability purpose? How do we compute the liability purpose? Well, we're gonna take 200 times 44.3635, which is equal to 8,873. Now notice we ignored the residual value of 800. Why? Because Adam believes the residual value to be greater than 800. Therefore, we don't have to worry about it. Therefore, we don't include it in the liability. Ability. Now let's change the scenario a little bit and assume that Adam expects the residual value to be 300 rather than greater than 800. Well, if you notice here, 300 is less than 800. Now we have a shortage. How do we compute the liability? For the 90% test, we don't change anything. How do we compute the liability? Well, we're gonna take $200 times the present value of the annuity due plus the shortage, the shortage is $500 times 0.77929, which is the present value of a single amount, together will give us the liability of 9,263. So notice the liability here is greater than the liability here. Why? Because we are guaranteeing an additional $500 in the liability in the amortization schedule. So if we look at the amortization schedule, we see that when there is, when, when we are good, when the guaranteed is the guaranteed amount is guaranteed or greater the liability is starting at 8873 and we're gonna go ahead and have 50 payments notice this is the schedule goes from payment 6 to payment 44 because so i can show you the whole thing on one page versus this liability when the guaranteed we felt we fell short of the liability we fell short of the resid residual value which we have to add to the liability, the liability starting at 9263. It means in the last year, we have an additional payment of $500 to bring the liability down to zero. So notice we are starting at a greater liability. And let's assume when it comes after, not 50 years, after 50 months for this deal, we had to come up with $600 rather than $500. The additional $100 will be technically a loss or an additional expense. So basically, if that's the case, it's not a big deal. Just it's, we were short, therefore we have to make up the short. It's a form of a loss. 
What should you do now to learn more about residual value for guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value for leases? I would suggest you go to farhatlectures.com, subscribe or multiple choice true false and exercises. The next session we would look at guaranteed residual value or unguaranteed unguaranteed residual value from the lessor's perspective. The lessor is the owner of the asset. Study hard. Good luck. The CPA exam is worth it. Your accounting courses are worth it. And stay safe.